Hi everyone, Alex Tardy, National Weather Service. That was a pretty good storm in terms of significant precipitation, a little bit too much rainfall. We have another atmospheric river, number three now for this month with significant precipitation and rain on snow. This looks like to be next week, starting sometime Monday, the main part of the storm Tuesday, lasting into at least Wednesday. Rain on snow and then colder uh, and changing to snow. Here's a photo of some of the flooding in the Carlsbad area in the middle of the screen and on the right hand side, Orange County Fire Authority photo of the cliff collapse in San Clemente. Still digging out, but now we have uh, significant progress with Arctic Circle Highway 18 open in the San Bernardino Mountains. Here are the key points. The ground is saturated. We saw the response to rivers and streams and uh, low-lying areas. Next atmospheric river, similar weather pattern, e elongated Pacific jet tapping into tropical moisture. It'll mainly be on Tuesday, but it'll last into Wednesday. I think it could start as early as uh, Monday afternoon or evening. There'll be some heavy rainfall rates and there'll be really high snow levels, but those snow levels will come down uh, to around 5,000 feet with accumulation Tuesday night and Wednesday. We do expect significant runoff into the rivers, including down into the Coachella Valley Desert, a small stream and creek flooding as well. And uh, we're looking at elevated surf as well with the storm uh, westerly swell. Here's the recent rainfall. Take a look at your area. These are just automated gauges from various agencies. So some of them may not be reporting correctly, but generally you can see one to three inches. Uh, of rain fell with the wet mountain locations absorbing that southwest flow atmospheric river uh, as much as four to five inches. The San Diego River rose to just over 10 feet. There's a photo on Fashion Valley Road on the left hand side. We also saw flooding on Highway 78 out in Carlsbad um, and Oceanside. So you can see that uh, the San Diego River is forecast to crest again around March 22nd, as shown here. The atmospheric rivers have been abundant and they've been focused on central Southern California. You can see the atmospheric rivers that have made direct hits at their strongest uh, amplitude or strongest intensity. That would be, for example, February 25th, January 14th, 16th, March 1st in Southern California. But a lot of the atmospheric rivers that went to the north also swung down into Southern California, even though they weakened. The precipitation since the start of 2023, uh, purple shaded is about two times as much compared to average. Temperatures have also been cool, especially in our mountains. All that snow, no coincidence, uh, minus four, minus five averaging for over two months. If you look at the water year, which is defined as October 1 across the United States, the purple shaded area. Well, the reason why we define it October 1 is because that is the start of the storm season. And that's evident here, central Southern California, with most of that area all the way down to San Diego, one and a half times above average with the southern Sierra Nevada the uh, target area right in the crosshairs. Here's some numbers this map is plotting precipitation amounts so you can see since January 1 rainfall in the mountains in some places in Southern California have been up over 30 inches in the wettest spots most of the coastal areas around 10 to 15 inches of rain since January 1 if you look at the whole water year, uh, my rain gauge is up over 22 inches. And you can see here along the coast, there are a lot of locations in that darker green. And even around Escondido and Valley Center, getting up near 30 inches. And our mountain areas, including Palomar Mountain, Lytle Creek, Mount Baldy, Santa Ana Mountains, even more between 35 and 50 inches of rain. The snowpack in California remains record pace, central southern Sierra Nevada. The blue line is 2023, arrows pointed to it. 
it's higher than even the levels we saw in 82, 83. If we look statewide at the numbers, including San Gregorio Mountain in Southern California, look at the numbers. Anywhere from 50 to over 100 inches of water inside that snowpack. So the snowpack is over two times its average. So two seasons in one. You can also see that with precipitation without just counting snowfall. You can see the Sierra Nevada is on pace with 2018-2019. And you can see the two wettest years. One was El Nino, one was La Nina just a few years ago. You can see that in the southern Sierra Nevada, they're a little closer to the two extremes. So again, this takes into account rain. So if you have a high elevation snow event like we saw recently, that is still important because that is still rainfall, water, and that's still going into the ground and into reservoirs. Speaking of the reservoirs, big gains continue just in the past week. Some of the largest reservoirs are now up to 70 to 85% capacity with some releases like on Lake Oroville. If you compare this time last year, you can see close to 3 million acre feet more water is in storage. We've also seen some increase in smaller lakes such as Big Bear Lake up nearly 5 feet. We are leaving La Nina that's been around for three years now as you can see on the trace there. And the La Nina was with us uh, considerably all the way through January. And then most recently, it has faded away into what we call the neutral stage. However, uh, the tropical atmosphere uh, in the area shown in the rectangle is still acting and behaving like La Nina or the cold phase. So it typically takes a while uh, before any warming or cooling to see changes in the tropics and therefore any real changes to our storm track or jet stream. Speaking of the storm track and jet stream, we've got both type this year. This was the same in January. February through early March is on the left hand side, straight out of Canada. 100 inches of snow fell in Lake Arrowhead. Recently, from March 9 through 14, you can see it has been pulling up tropical moisture, Pineapple Express. The jet stream is taking a really far south dip around 25 to 30 north latitude, driving it right into California at the angle shown here. The average pattern over the past two atmospheric rivers that we saw is shown here. So this is the jet stream. Without this jet stream in a position this far south, you wouldn't get such deep tropical moisture coming up here. Uh, same goes for back in January. The jet stream uh, was in a position extended across the Pacific that drove storms into California, like shown here. What do we expect? Well, the next storm is coming across the Pacific, and this one looks like it'll dig somewhat, so it'll have colder air next week on Wednesday. Uh, but it goes far enough south that even though it doesn't contain an atmospheric river immediately, it picks one up. We also expect to see potentially the following week uh, a similar weather pattern across our area. Okay, here's a forecast of the atmospheric river for next week, starting Monday on the left hand side, and then uh, the heart of it, the core of it, as it strengthens, taking aim on SoCal on Tuesday, i.e., heavy rain. The main atmospheric river um, is shown here, and it looks like it'll be moving through middle of the day on March 21st. Here's a look at the expected precipitation, rain and snow across all of California. Uh, this will take us all the way through early Wednesday of next week. Zoomed up to Southern California, you can see widespread one to two inches of rain, even in the city areas and also across our mountains, similar to the last storm, another two to four inches of rain. And remember, at the end of the storm, some snow. Speaking of which, the snow looks like Tuesday night and especially Wednesday when the colder air arrives right behind the atmospheric river. 
our mountain communities could pick up several inches of snow, including some snow even over the higher elevations above 5,000 feet in San Diego County. Winds will be a problem in general, especially with the heavy rain and saturated ground, gusts near 30 on the coast, and then uh, mountain areas and passes gusts over 50 miles per hour. The outlook uh, for the end of the month, got a storm on the 22nd that is exiting and possibly another one later in the month. So the chance of precipitation remains elevated or above average. Make sure you check the latest warnings, watches, and the lower end advisories on weather.gov. Stay safe, everyone.